bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture in this class we are going to begin with the first chapter of class 7th alternative english nagaland poem which is the sentence now before we begin with this chapter i shall write a couple of words on your screen and you are going to guess and tell me whether according to you those group of words be called a sentence or not and if not then why for example if i say now this the these group of words that you can see on your screen i feeling hungry am very can you call these group of words as a sentence no certainly no why because after reading these group of words i know that it is not making any sense at all if uh you know i give you another example will i go shimla tomorrow too again a group of words do you think this group of word is making any sense to you no absolutely not the reason being these two group of words cannot be classified as a sentence those group of words which make sense can be known as sentences okay the first group of words will have to be rewritten as i am feeling very hungry now when i have rewritten or rearranged these group of words my group of words can now be termed as a sentence similarly if i talk about the second group of words i will go to shimla tomorrow so again now i can call this as a sentence and i can call this as a sentence as well why because the group of words have been rearranged and they are making sense so my dear students what according to you is a sentence now so a sentence is basically something that can help the others understand us whatever we have in our mind and once we are expressing that with the help of words in such a manner that the others are able to understand us this is what is a sentence but what is important for a sentence to classify or to term it as a sentence it should make sense unless and until a group of words is making sense it will not be termed as a sentence okay so a group of words which makes sense and which enables you to express what is there in your mind and also makes it possible for the other person to understand you is what we understand by a sentence okay now read the group of words which are given on your screen again the first one match very exciting was it a is it making any sense no we will have to rearrange them we will have to rewrite them so it was a very exciting match now that i have rearranged the words i can call this as a sentence similarly look at the second group of words you do want book this read too so again it isn't making any sense at all so do you want to read this 
go. And since I am asking a question, so what I require is a question. So after rearranging these group of words in a sensible manner, I get my sentences. So one thing I know about my sentence is that it will always make sense. Another important thing for you all to understand when rearranging the group of words or when identifying whether a group of words is actually a sentence or not is the simple, the basic structure of a sentence which is subject followed by the verb and the object. These three components are the most important things that will help you to write a sentence. I need a subject in my sentence. The subject has to be followed by a verb and I need to have an object as well. Now we shall be reading about subject verb as well as object in detail in the later parts of your book. But for now, you need to understand that subject is something or somebody you are talking about. So, who or what you are talking about is a subject. Okay. Verb is your action word. That word which tells us what action is being performed by the subject. And object refers to, you know, the rest of the sentence. You can say whatever task is being performed by the verb, what is associated with the verb. Or whatever is the subject being related to in the sentence. For example, if we look at this sentence that we rearranged. It was a very exciting match. What is my subject? What am I talking about? I am talking about an exciting match. And the pronoun that I have used for my match is it. So the first place is going to be organized, is going to be, uh, you know, taken up by the pronoun which I am using for the subject. So it. Followed by the verb, was, is the verb and then comes my rest of the sentence. So this is how it becomes easier for us to identify whether a group of words is a proper sentence. Now, again, this is how we had rewritten our sentences. It was a very exciting match and do you want to read this book? So this is... A sentence. So now what we know about a sentence is that A. A sentence always begins with a capital letter. Right? It was a very exciting match. Do you want to read this book? I am very hungry. I will go to Shimla tomorrow. Whatever sentences we've discussed so far. We saw that each of them began with a capital letter. Second, the words in the sentence must be in proper order. What is the proper order? As I have told you, subject plus the verb plus the object. So this is how the order of the sentence is decided. And next, it will either end with a full stop or a mark of interrogation. So, the correct punctuation mark is to be used at the end of a sentence depending on the mood of the sentence. If it is a normal statement, we will use a full stop. If we are asking a question from somebody, we will have to write a question mark at the end. If we are expressing a, a strong desire about something, a very strong feeling about something, we will have to use an exclamatory mark also, the sentences which are known as exclamatory sentences. So basically the punctuation that comes at the end of your sentence will depend on the mood of your sentence. 
So these are the three most important criteria that will give the sentence the position of a sentence. So it will always begin with a capital letter, it will be written in a proper order and will correct in uh, with a proper punctuation. So what have we learned so far? That a group of words which is arranged in such a manner that it makes complete sense is a sentence. Now let us look at a few a group of words and try to make a sentence out of them. As you can see, the question says, rearrange the words to make meaningful sentences. So the words are given to you. You have to rearrange them in such a manner that they uh, make meaningful sentences. So, grew tree house the behind the banyan the. So, is my uh, subject now. It will help me to write my sentence. What am I talking about? The banyan tree. So the banyan tree is my subject. Now I have to look at my verb. What is the verb in the sentence? What is the action word? Grew. So I wrote grew. The banyan tree grew. Now I have to write my object. I am left with three words. House, the, behind. So I have to rearrange them. Behind is a preposition. So grew behind the house. So this is how my group of words changes to a sentence now. Just because I knew that it has to be a subject followed by a verb, then an object, I was able to rearrange these words with such ease. Let us look at another sentence. Branches, enormous ground, the to its hung. Okay, so I'm talking about the banyan tree we know. So what is the pronoun that they've used for the banyan tree? It's. So the first word of my subject that I use is its. And what its? What am I talking about? Enormous branches. So it's enormous branches. Enormous means huge. So the huge branches of the banyan tree. What is my verb? Hung. Hung comes the verb. And next the object to the Always remember, as you must have seen in the above sentence also, your verb will always have the preposition after it. So, if there is a preposition in the sentence, you will have it after the verb. The position of the preposition will always be after the verb. This is again going to help you write the, rearrange the group of words in the correct manner. Let us look at another sentence. Thick the green feet high leaves sixty had tree. Again, what am I talking about? The tree. Right? So, and what do I know about the tree? That the tree is sixty feet high. So now my subject becomes... The 60 feet high tree. What is my verb now? Had. So had. What did the tree have? So the 60 feet high tree had thick green Leaves. Full stop. Again, I have rearranged my words in the appropriate manner. Now comes the next sentence. Animals form the tree in number made small there of a hat. Now, as you can see, there are two more sentences. Rather, we have five. 
In total, we had eight sentences. So, I have discussed the first three with you and that must have given you a hint of how we are supposed to rearrange all the sentences in such a manner that they form a sentence out of it. So, what have we learned? We have learned so far that a sentence is a group of words which is arranged in such a manner that it makes sense. B. A sentence will always begin with a capital letter. C. The sentence is to be arranged in proper order. That is the subject to be followed by the verb and the verb to be followed by the object. This is how we've solved the first three sentences on the screen also for you. And the last thing that we know about a sentence is that depending on the mood of the sentence, it will either end with a full stop or with an interrogation sign that is a question mark or with, a, uh, with an exclamatory sign. So this, my dear students, was the meaning of sentence. Now, we have different types of sentences. We have assertive sentences, exclamatory sentences, imperative sentences, as well as exclamatory sentences. So, we shall learn about each of those sentences, their meaning, their formation, and we'll solve the exercises based on them in the next video.